They got the gyrocopter, so they got some carry potential themselves, but when DD picked Phantom Lancer, you know things are serious. The good thing for Mouse with seeing the Phantom Lancer as well as the Keeper of Light this early is that they can just go and pick up super aggressive heroes out of this. Yeah. And just like force the peel down. They can even go for something like a Storm here, straight away. It might be quite weak to have against the Batrider, of course, in mid, but DD hasn't used the Batrider mid. They used it either in the jungle or in the long lane, which means that Storm wouldn't be a bad pickup. Might even go for a Puck. So yeah, Puck is going to be the pickup, which means that Fata is going to be able to rotate out as soon as he hits level 6. And if he can keep the rotation going that he had last game, it's going to be amazing for him. I think DD may have jumped the gun, and I think that's what you were kind of trying to indicate when you were talking about the aggressive supports coming out of Mouse, because all you see is a gyrocopter and a life stealer. The gyrocopter can one versus one against a lot of heroes and do exceptionally well, and there's only a life stealer right now and a mid, so the supports are pretty much going to be the only choices coming out from Mouse Sports in the last two picks. And DD, they need one more support, potentially an offlaner, however they want to try to do things. But for DD, are you looking to ban out the aggressive supports? We can already see Lashrak has been taken out. Do you maybe want to ban out the Shadow Demon? We know he's fantastic against Batrider and Phantom Lancer, but not only that, it gives you that potential to go for that super aggressive wipe. The thing is for DD is that even if they ban out, say, three strong supports in terms of a Shrek, maybe go for the Shadow Demon like you mentioned, and then Alina, you're still going to leave heroes like a Rubik in the pool, and with that you can go Gyrocopter support. And you yeah. still have a strong support combo with the Rubik Gyrocopter, and then you can go an aggressive tri lane with the Lifestealer, <laughs> and still look to something like Lone Druid for the safe lane, which means that they're still going to be super strong. So they're not locked down in terms of lane with the Gyrocopter because Gyrocopter can, of course, be support and a carry, and Life Seater can be in the safe lane or in the long lane. Rubik's going to be banned out, though, but that still leaves either a Lashak or an Alina in the pool, so it could work out for them. The three more bands coming the way of both teams here. Didi looking at one more, Miles looking at two. We can see the Outworld device has been taken out because we actually, I think, talked about this during the pregame, just the potential for that hero to completely shut down somebody like a Puck because, well, Intelligence heroes versus OD just don't function well. And you can see the supports on the side of DD right now. They don't really look like they're going to be moving, but since we don't know what Mouse Sports' game plan necessarily is, we haven't seen their supports, the Lashrak, the Rubik taken out, as you had previously mentioned. There's kind of the sense of Mouse Sports might not looking to be rotating much either, just because you want to consistently apply pressure to that Phantom Lancer of DD. I think that Mouse Sports most likely going to try and look for the lineup they had yesterday against Roxkiss, yeah. where they went for Alina to go with the Lifestealer Gyrocopter tri lane and then get a Lone Druid for the safe lane, because Lone Druid for the safe lane wouldn't be bad here. It works well against the Batrider as well. I mean, the Batrider, of course, is going to be able to get a lot of harassment out, but Shadow Demon is going to be the last ban out, which means that Lina's still in the pool, and if they ban something like a Queen of Pain out here, you're almost kind of forced to use the Batrider in mid, because there are, of course, heroes like Magnus, but Puck still has the upper hand in that. We could also see something like a Juggernaut team. just seem yeah. to love to put that hero mid nowadays, especially in this particular Western qualifier. But one more ban here for Mouse. What will it be? It looks like it's going to be the Magnus, a hero that I actually feel isn't that great against Puck in general, just because of how easy it is to exploit the Puck's mobility, especially before the blink. And DD, they were picking up a Chen. They're just going to try and protect this Phantom Master as much as possible. Yeah. Like, they want to go late game with this. They're going to have the Shen and the Keep of the Light. I mean, you can't have super good rotations. You're going to be able to pressure down maybe the Tier 1, Tier 2 towers just because you have the Shen, so you're getting the extra push potential. But their safe lane is going to be so weak. Ten so if Mouseports goes for pretty much the exact same lineup they went for yesterday with Alina, uh, Nike's Gyrocopter, aggressive tri lane, Didi's just going to straight up lose that lane. Reserved we'll see what the support pick's going to be. This is going to indicate a lot here for DD, depending on what this pick is going to come out to be. Normally, you might see something like an offlaner and a mid picked a little bit later. Sometimes it's a carry. But when you have nothing but two supports to choose from, then you're pretty much giving away your hand no matter what. So DD, they're going to get the last pick, which means they could try to change their situation a bit. Maybe they want to try to do something crazy, like go aggressive. We don't see it often, but... Sometimes when you really want to avoid a bad situation for your PL, you have to make risky decisions. And it's going to be a Sand King for Mao. so taking a little bit of a, a pick from the Southeast Asian scene and Chinese Dota as well. From that, I feel that they're most likely still going to try and run something aggressive. Picking up the Sand King as a support, we're most likely going to see the Gyrocopter in the safe lane instead and then run an aggressive tri lane with the Lifestealer. Might want to try and get some follow-up stun. But 
I really wonder what Didi is going to try and pick up here. Something that would work well for them is, of course, the Queen of Pain because you get some Ten aggression out of it, remaining. but how strong will it actually be against the rest of Miles Sports lineup? Five the Queen of Pain will work remaining. well in mid if you don't want to run the Batrider there, but how much will he add to the big teamfight engagements when Miles Sports just scatters up where they have an Epicenter and a Dream Cult? My worry is that Miles Sports pick a support who doesn't really... I don't want to say he doesn't do well in the laning phase, because in some matchups he does. And way back when Brood was popular, you used to see Sand King versus Brood, and you know how good he can be with mm. levels and that quick blink and arcanes. But until that point, if you play him as a support, he doesn't really get the same kind of an impact as even somebody like a Keeper of the Light. He's often compared to heroes like Vengeful Spirit, who in the laning phase just don't really give you a whole lot. He's more of a roamer. And you're roaming with a hero who... At level 1, his stun range is 350. That's like nothing. It's so hard to get a range. And yeah, you talked about protection. DD, they're picking up a clockwork. Uh, they're just going to try and protect this Phantom Master as much as possible. Push it to a 50 minute game and then Peel's pretty much going to 1v5 the whole team. Shen is going to fall off. Doesn't really matter. They're going to win if they can get it that far or that long into the game. But Milesport's most likely looking for another support here. Like you mentioned, Sanking stun isn't that long, which means that you're going to have to have something either that is a follow-up, you have the open wounds remaining. of course, or you're going to need some strong, uh, uh, gonna need some strong follow-up out of it, like a Light Strike Array from Alina would be a bad choice, but they might want to try and go for something else though. Reserve time. I am really... I'm puzzled by the Sand King. That's, that's pretty much the only thing for me right now on the side of DD that I don't really feel fits. Everything else, pretty typical mouse style. They get the Lifestealer, the Puck, the Gyrocopter. They have a mass amount of AoE, which is nice. And maybe that's the whole purpose behind the Sand King. Maybe they know that Hand of God and an early mech on the Chen, or even the Keeper of the Light, is going to offset a lot of damage. So they want to try to get just huge bursts and try to take the 5-on-5 five five AoE fights before anything happens. But it's a risk to me. I, I, if, it, if it goes bad, the Sand King has an incredibly hard time recovering. Yeah, Sand King just... He needs so many levels. He really needs to get first level 7 to get the max stun range. And then of course he needs the epicenter as well. He kind of need level 11 to be able to put out enough damage. But uh, I wanted to see something like the old mouse force lineup where they actually ran black on the Sand King and safe lane farming instead. But we're going to see black picking up the gyrocopter instead. But this still indicates an aggressive trial to me since Kork was picked up the Prepare lifesteal. But since we're already talking about it, we can go through the lineups. And on the side of Mouse, we got Syndrome playing on the Lina. Koikwa picking up that Life Stealer. Puck being handled by Fada as usual. Pass picking up the Sand King and of course Black on that Gyrocopter. And then on the side of DD, we're gonna have Chen. Gonna be played by Goblack Funzi. Gonna be playing on that Clockwork Batrider. Gonna be played by Sakshka. Fucking mad. Gonna be playing on the Keeper of the Light. And of course that leaves Silent on his Phantom Lancer. And Silent realizes this game that he can't be greedy like he was when they played yesterday. Yeah. He's picked up a shield and he's been pulled some extra tangos just to be able to have the regen. And he knows that if he actually goes into the lane without the shield, he's just going to straight up die. So he's going to play it a bit safer. And not having, having that Quang Bay will, of course, make it a tiny bit harder to the last bit, last hit. But with a Silent as, or with a carry as skillful as Silent, that shouldn't really be a problem. We saw. Silence PL the other day, and it was pretty ridiculous. He was maintaining roughly about 10 CS a minute, I think, give or take, and he just overwhelmed uh, Rock's Kiss, and it was a very interesting sight to behold, because that game there were a couple of interesting item choices, but it's not about that right now. It's about DD versus Miles. It's about Miles being one game up. If they can take game number two, then DD are backed into a corner, and we know that DD is the team who a lot of a lot of people say they have these strategies that they can pull out. They have Goblack, obviously a brilliant drafter. They have Bucking Mad, and their strategies are innovative, and more often than not, they make a whole lot of sense. Sometimes, though, it feels to me like if they get anything taken away from them in the early game, they struggle so much to come back. Yeah, they usually struggle a lot, and we saw that, especially in the last game. Down in bottom lane, actually, Koikwa... Going for some creep pulling straight away just to force Silent to take some extra damage, but we mentioned it, he's got that shield already, so it looks like they just made <laughs> the creeps push into their tower anyways, but I like the decision out of Goblack to move up into the uh, enemy's jungle straight away just because we've seen it pretty much every game that the enemy always wards up your jungle as much as, much as possible, <coughs> if they only buy one set of wards, they're not going to have any room wards or anything like that. So Goblack trying to farm away here, but Paz has <coughs> made his way over. 
This is the one thing about the Sand Kingdom. I mean, what is Poss really going to do? Aside from chasing him around and looking at him funny. And Cinderin, he's made his way up here now as well. But, yeah, Gobblack's going to be fine. Sure, it might be a little annoying that he's been forced out of the jungle. And the supports are looking for him, but I don't really think they're going to be able to get in range. They're going to try to kill the uh, Dark Troll Summoner here. But he's got quite a bit of HP. Could be a little bit of golden experience that these two supports are going to be happy about. Actually, even net Cinderin to try to get far enough away. And it's got 18 health. Might just get denied by the mid. Or maybe the mid player himself will just try to kill it. And yep, free kill for Fata. Nice for him to be able to pick off that bit of experience and gold. But this is interesting to me because they're actually leaving Koikva down here. Like, they're not giving him any help. I would imagine sooner or later he's just going to go to the jungle instead because he's a hero who can actually do that. Whereas Funzi, he's being played mid on that clockwork, which we have not seen a whole lot of. No, we haven't seen Clockwork mid a single time this game, or this tournament, I believe, but it works out quite well. I mean, you get a fast level 6, you can get bottle, even go for face boots once you're mid, since you're not going to be on the support role or the long lane, you're not going to be able to, or you're not going to have to pick up those arcane boots, so... Fada using his orb to harass, as well as getting some last hits, might have wanted to try to contest that room, but... Don't really want to risk it against Funsy since he might have had the battery assault and that could have been really dangerous. But what I like with Mouse leaving Koikwa down in the long lane is that we mentioned it in the last game, Lifestealer has a really good lane presence. And when you have two heroes that are quite weak, I mean you can harass quite well with the Keeper of the Light and the Phantom Lancer, but you can't really stand up against a Lifestealer. Right. So he can stay solo down there since Goldlike started off in the dire jungle. That is actually a very good point. And we can see some de-warding being done here on the side of Mouse. They're trying to maintain some kind of jungle control. They might even be able to go on Silent here if they have a sentry or anything. Silent actually running up, so he's going to dodge the vision of the sentry for the moment. He's running off to the side here. Mouse looking to try to find him. Koikva, he's pinging out the woods. He's going to spot Silent again, but he doesn't have the open wounds. Not sure if they can even go on this as Burrow Strike's range at such a low level is very, very low. So no first blood on the board just yet. But you can see the Phantom Lancer, he's sitting at 13-2. and two. It's not great. It's not horrible, but Fata is really the story, man. He's 22-3 and three in this middle lane. Well, Fata is really dominating, dominating in this mid lane. He's been able to farm with his orb, of course. I believe he's bottle crowing as well, so always will be able to have that mana. But Funsi has been, since we saw him, he moved away to get the rune control instead. Even though the lane was a bit pushed, he still was focusing, at least in the start, more on rune control just to be able to deny it from Fata, since he knows that if Fata starts rotating Boom, as soon as it's level 6, it's going to be a bad thing for DD. And DD, they haven't really been able to utilize their Chen a whole lot either. Funzi's got an invisibility rune here. It's level 5. It's maxing out that flare. It's going to spot Poss in the middle lane. And we can even see Goblack is being chased out of the woods by just Black. I mean, it's a solo gyrocopter and he's managing to get some semblance of rune control. And well, now Miles definitely knows that Funzi's invisible because he just took the double damage rune. So, not the sneakiest clockwork ever. Oh, but he still managed to get it. And Misplay coming out of Koikwa down in the bottom lane that we actually missed on the camera that he used open wounds on a creep instead of silent oh when they actually had him on the vision of the tower so bit of a misplay since Sinran is down there they should have enough oh, but they're they gonna go for fucking mad air yeah, Stone's going to come out, Light Strike Array, Silent, he wants to go for the return kill, First Blood's going to be going to Mouse. Can they actually pick off Cinder, and he's got the salve, Silent, he has no mana actually to go invisible again, he's still under the guise of the Sentry, Quakeback like, trying to chase, no mana for open wounds, unfortunately, I think Silent will be just fine in that situation, but he is really relentless here, he just says, get out, don't come back, this is my line. Yeah, he really wanted to force him down there, fucking mad coming back in time though, being able to salve him up, but... A really nice first blood kill coming the way of Mouse, and since Sinaran didn't break his self, he's going to be able to stay in this lane, and he's still got two more nukes to throw out. So as soon as Koikwa gets open wounds again, as soon as he hits 110 mana, they can go once again for fucking that. We'll see if that's going to be the choice. And Koikwa, him not having mana is a problem, because if Lifestealer doesn't have mana, his lane presence goes down significantly, and you were mentioning a little bit before how important that would be. So... For right now, Mouse, they maintain a kill lead, but you can look at the overall CS. The only person who's really doing well on the side of Mouse is actually Fata in terms of his lane, but three out of the top five right now on the side of DD in terms of overall farm. A bit surprised to see that Black is suffering so much from this. I'm guessing that Goblax, with his presence up in top, most likely have forced him out, and of course, if you get too many stackers on that sick Napalm on you, you kind of have to back out and just reset it and that leaves so much room for Sockstria to form up on that Batrider, so... Black falling a bit behind, but Gyrocopter, if Syndrome or Paul starts stacking the Ancients, he's gonna catch up really fast. 
That's always a nice thing about having a gyrocopter. Funzi gonna get spotted by Fata. The coil's there, but Fata, he has like no mana. Looks like he was trying to find a rune. They actually don't have any vision right now, so that's probably why he expended the coil right there, but Funzi, very, very low on hit points. He's playing a bit greedy. He's trying to go for the rune, at least for the time being. He's got two charges on the wand, and if he goes for this, if Fata spots him, he could just end up dying. Yeah, he's got a ward, though, so he's going to be fine. Yeah, he's going to take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> I believe he actually hookshot away from Fata, expecting that I would go, he would go up on the high ground. So really nice for him. Fucking mad. Trying to get... Oh, oh Cinderin! Cinderin! He gets clipped wow. by the Illuminate, and the Lance manages to take him down. So silent. He actually gets a kill. He's actually ha He hasn't died either, which is very, very nice. And you mentioned the open wounds being missed, but... Still, DD, they're fighting here in game two. Yeah, fucking mad getting a lot of good harassment out with this Illuminate, just forcing Koiko back since he has to use either a Rage or an Open Wounds. I mean, you need the Open Wounds to initiate, but if you're forced to use Rage in lane, you're not going to have enough mana, especially now since he's already used it for a kill. So he's up to 156 mana, which isn't enough for both, both of them. So really nice there by DD to get a counter kill and opens up a bit more room for Silent to farm, of course. Yeah, Funzi and Sakshka. They're looking for a kill here in top lane. Clockwork level 7 now. He's got that hookshot ready if he wants to try to use it. But they're not going to be able to find Black. And Koikva, he still maintains a pretty high level of farm. He's actually starting to pull ahead of where even the Phantom Lancer is on the side of TD. He's got his phase boots. He's got the Orb of Enemy sitting at 450 gold. And Goblack has now made the transition to bottom lane with Fata, who has an invisibility. He should have enough to use all of his spells as long as he gets one Bottle Charge off. He wants to go for Bucking Mag. Can Koifa get the damage done? He actually... Uh, the tree gets eaten right there. Coil, gonna be on Goblack. Can they manage to take him down right here? The Life Second Ray's gonna be there, and Bucking Mad also goes down. It's a two for one. It's silent. He manages to pick off center in the back. The Infest is gonna be there, and two supports down on the side of DD. Koifa picks up the kill, and Silent gets another kill, so he is now two and zero. Yeah, Silent getting a kill out of it, but still a better trade for Miles. Fata getting down there with the Invis rune, killing off the Shen, forcing him back even more. I mean, Shen's level 4, he's been able to jungle in the offensive jungle, but it's still hard for him, this game, and getting killed twice, uh, losing your free again. Here comes the call down, can they take him out before the Firefly gets him too far away? It doesn't look like it! He's gonna be able to skate off the edge of the map and pop the salve, so... Unfortunate right there for Miles that they couldn't manage to kill him. The Black... He's level 7, he's still got his phase boots, so he's not doing too bad up here. Yeah, he still managed to get some farm, but he's catching up now. He's ahead of the... Oh, silent bottom! Oh. Koikva, he gets the open wounds off center, and he wants to go for the Light Striker. Right, the Dragon Slave is going to be there. He might actually go down to Silent before he turns around with one more hit. Can Koikva pick off Silent? One more auto attack. He's going to be able to secure it. It's a killing spree for both heroes, but Koikva ends Silent's killing spree. So I got to say, a support for a PL and the extra gold from a streak, Mal's happy with that. A really nice trade, and of course, Koikwa ahead of the farm, and Silent being stopped to farm for quite a, quite some time now. He's only at 31 last hits, whereas Koikwa is, of course, 38, so it's not too far ahead, but it's still ahead, and of course he killed him off, so... Maus is starting to pull ahead in this farm, because Gyrocopter is caught up to the Batrider as well, whereas Batrider actually left the top lane. It looks like he might rotate up. He's about 900 gold away from his Blink Dagger, which is going to be really nice for him. The Blink Dagger is going to be key because right now they have no initiation outside of Funzi. And Funzi has been trying to rotate around the map, but he hasn't really found his openings yet. So once that Batrider gets a Blink, that's going to be great. Once Fata gets a Blink on the side of Miles, this is also going to help them. But Silent, it's a roaming PL here in the top lane. Poss, he throws out a Burrow Strike. The call down's going to be there. Black eats a Lance, going to be forced out for the time being. Poss still trying to chase. Wants another Burrow Strike. The lasso is going to be there. Hookshot, it's going to be on Black. They try to trap him with the Cog. Sakshka, he's going to be going down here. And one more auto attack from Fata. The Dream Coil was even expended. Can he get away? The Silence is going to be there. Fata dropping quite low. He gets the face shift, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Silent, he gets the kill. Posse's trying to TP out. Will he be able to? And he does barely escape and Mao's maybe one of the first exchanges this whole game they've actually lost Chen Heal being used on bottom lane for Bucking Mad to try to allow him to escape from Koikva but the Orb of Venom and the phase boots just a little bit too strong Goblack needs to be careful open wounds gonna be up in about five seconds luckily it wasn't at that point in time but just as we say that DD might have gotten a favorable exchange Koikva finds another kill a great move from Silent to just leave the lane early on and this is one of the things that they did in yesterday's game as well. Even though the Silent got a lot more farm, he still started rotating as soon as he got his drums and Ayasha just to be more active. He doesn't want to be the carry that sits for 50 minutes and doesn't do anything. He wants to be active and he wants to help out. And you can see that very clearly with the power treads pick up as well as a poor man's shield and now working his way towards the drum. 
Mouse are expecting them to go late game, whereas now Silent with the rotation, he's just going to try and dominate the mid game. He's level 9 too, by the way, which is the same level as Funzy, who is mid, which is pretty crazy in terms of overall experience gain. But a lot of that, I think, is attributed to... This has been more of a 2-1-2 game than a tri-lane or anything like that. Gawlak's been wandering around in the zone. We've had the Lifestealer and Lina in bottom. So the, the supports are getting a lot more experience. The carries are getting a lot more experience. So we can see Quake was also level 9. But Lina having a Laguna Blade at less than 12 minutes into the game, that's pretty darn important for Mouse. Yeah, if they can manage to find someone out, I mean, if Bucky Mad walks up too, too much in the lane, he's going to pretty much instantly get killed. So it's really nice that the supports are actually catching up so much on farm as we're actually going to see an instant replay coming up. We can see Sakshka. Poss is chasing him down right here. The call down is going to clip for just a second. The homing missile was there. And Poss really wants his kill. Fata even goes in. Funzi hook shots in the back. He finds Black, gets the cogs. The Dream Coil, I think, from Fata here may be a little bit of overkill. I think they would have gotten the kill regardless. And now Fata, he spends so much time in Firefly that he just simply can't escape. I mean, even his escape path is running along the fire. So Fata gets picked off. Poss, he starts a TP. Nothing else up on the side of DD, and he gets away. But still perfectly happy with that trade, being able to get those heroes especially. I don't think they're going to be too torn up about not killing the Sand King. No, they're probably quite happy about it. Even though uh, the Bat Rider went down, he's getting a lot of farm. He's up to 1900 gold, which means that the Blink Dagger is soon going to be online. And then they can just pick up Qu uh, pick up Koikwa down in bottle lane, kill him off really fast, or even rotate up to top. Since Silent, he's sitting up in top lane farming instead. And Black, since he's so far behind from the start, he's having a hard time to just keep up with the uh, Phantom Lancer in the lane now. The one thing, too, that we always have to worry about if you're Maus is... DD have all their towers still. I mean, sure, DD haven't taken any, but we talked about how the late game is going to favor them because of the PL, because of their initiation potential and whatnot, so it's kind of scary for Maus that they haven't managed to make something happen. They're going to be going for Silent. Here comes the Burst Strike. The Epi's going to be there. They have no qualms using every ultimate they have just to take down Phantom Lancer. Getting Silent off the map for even around 30 seconds is going to be great for them. That's some serious hate, though. Yeah, I mean, an was... Epicenter and a Laguna Blade at like 150 HP... Ooh, that's, that's got to hurt, but it must still f feel quite good for Silent because he knows that they can't gank him for at least a minute after he spawns, which is quite nice for him. He's going to be able to farm up, maybe even TP up to the top lane once again because Mouse, they got some nice pushing potential, but the flat cannon, he has maxed it out, so they should be able to clear the next creep wave coming out, but I still don't feel that the damage won't be enough or will be enough to bring down this tier 1 tower up on top. Aditi's just doing a fantastic job of kind of holding themselves steady, not giving away any map control. And the, the Keeper of the Light being able to get so much extra experience, like we talked about Lina managing to hit 6 fast, it definitely helped secure the kill on Silent Top, but having the max rank of Illuminate and Chakra on your ultimate at a very early stage allows you to keep your outer two towers up for so much longer. And Sakshka, he's got his Blink Dagger here, he's smoked up. Fata actually has an invisibility, and he's going to be teleporting to top lane. So this could be huge, actually. Saksha going in, he's looking for Black. He's going to find him, but Fata is there. They want to try to go for Silent instead. Black, he's lasted right now. Can he get the call down? The Coil is going to go down along with the homing missile. Can they actually do enough damage? But the mech, the Chen heal comes out. And Maus, they teleport in and Koikfa, but I don't think they have enough damage. They're trying to go for Bucky Mad. The blind actually misses completely coming out from Bucky Mad. Are they going to be able to take him down the Flame Break to try to peel right there for the Life Stealer? It will succeed for the time being. Poss going to be forced to Burrow Strike up to the high ground and he's actually stuck by a centaur right now he's gonna have to run back through the neutral camp to get back into this fight and Miles they're actually chasing down Silent who's all by himself Silent was looking for the kill Black needs to be careful though there's gonna be another Lance Light Striker Ray comes off onto Funzi are they gonna be able to take him down here it looks like they will the cogs come out and Black he ends up dropping it might be a two for zero exchange here for Silent at least can he actually get the kill he's trying to run away he throws off another Lance the Silence is there and Vata takes him down so again Miles they only lose black. Sakshka's trying to run away with the Firefly here. He doesn't actually have enough mana for his Blink Dagger, but still really awkward for Silent to go that heavy in. Here comes another Burrow Strike. Mouse! They're going to be able to get Sakshka as well. And they actually get a nice exchange and the Illuminate clips on Poss in the back. And Bucking Mad, he manages to get himself a bit of extra gold. 7 to 10 right now at 15 and a half minutes. And we were talking about the insane amount of aggression in game number one. Not quite on the same level in game two, but still pretty action-packed. People are still fighting quite yeah. a bit, which is really nice to see. But that fight was so weird just because it was so long and Silent was still on the enemy, behind enemy lines and just trying to do as much as possible. We managed to pick up Black, which is really nice. But Koikwa, 
He's getting so much out of this. He's been able to free farm down in bottom lane, and now surviving that fight and getting some kills. He's six and zero with 68 last hits at 60 minutes. I mean, the last hit's falling behind a bit, but six and zero on a life stealer this far in the game. He's picked up his drums, almost finished off an armlet as well. So, life stealer is gonna for sure be able to open up room for Black to farm. Afunzi is going to be able to snipe the room right here from Fata. Fata actually uses the Waning Rift, and Funzi's currently on chase. He's got the Battery Assault. Going to force Fata to actually jump, but here comes the hook shot. But Koi is there. He gets both of them inside. Here comes Sakshka from the low ground. The Coil is going to stop the lasso for just enough time. As Koifa, he picks up another kill. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Silent going to Lance Black here on the high ground. That could have been a lot worse, actually, for DD. They do end up losing Funzi. And I think maybe he thought his support was going to be a tiny bit closer, but... Killing the mid for mid, I think Malus is still going to be happy considering Koiko was the one to get the extra gold. Now he's got his armor. Koiko has finished off his blink dagger as well, or I mean Fata's finished off his blink dagger, and like you mentioned, Koiko getting the kill, so he's finished off his armlet, which means that he's going to be that much stronger. But the blink dagger on a puck means that it didn't really matter that he actually died. Dream call, it's on a fairly short cooldown, only 85 seconds, and. With the Blink Dagger, he's got enough initiation, initiation as it is, and pass, finishing off Arcane Boots, he's going to start working his way towards the Blink Dagger himself. Mouse, they've got some scary initiation now. you got a Sand King to follow up with the Coil. I think maybe this was their plan all along. Fata getting a pretty early Blink Dagger. It allows the Sand King to get in, and that's really the big deal. You have the call down to slow even after the Coil, so there's plenty of time for, for him to find his Burrow Strike, and that's really what he needs, so... I had my doubts about the Sand King pick during the draft phase because I didn't feel like it would really help in the laning too much. But at the same time, it hasn't necessarily had to do that because it's been a 2-1-2 for the most part. And of course, Sakshka was soloing top with Godlike kind of walking around. So, the laning phase slightly favoring Mouse here in the early game. And of course, the fights have been too. We can look at the net worth. Lifestealer actually sitting at the highest, the guy who was pretty much abandoned by his team for some time. And he's 7-0 and zero on top lane. They find Sakshka as well. Mao's just getting kills all over the place. Really, really nice movement once again. And bottom, they might be able to actually take out Black as Silent is actually going to get picked off as well. That is... Silent just died to two supports. I mean, they used the Epi and a Laguna Blade, sure, but if you're in this case, why not? You don't want to die, though, on hard carry against two supports in this situation. I mean, you could always joke around, you're on appeal, you should be able to kill them, but this early on, He's only got drums and power shots, which means that he's not going to have that insane illusion army coming up since he's not even level 11 yet, but Cogs in mid. Afunzi is trying to run away. The open woods are there. Koikfa, he's dodging. He pops the drums. He really wants his kill center, and he lands this stun. Can Funzi actually get away from this? He's looking for a hook shot to try to get back to his team. Can he get it off? No, he can't. And Cinderin, he gets the kill, but middle lane. We can see DD is still trying to look to push to tier 1. Tier 1 in the meantime dies top in favor of Miles as we're going to see some reaction now. Silent actually teleporting up there. He's going to try to do some counter pushing and trying to chase away Black. Black going to try to TP. Looks like he will be able to get away. Yeah, I just manages to get away there. But Black has finished off his BKB as well. So he's been able to get some farm, which means that he can be in the fights now. And he's going to be able to dish out quite a bit of damage. But, oh, Fata in mid. Goblack going to get coiled here. Silent stuff as well. His ultimate's actually on cooldown. They're going to be able to drop him. Give another kill to Koik. But Sakta trying to find Cinder and not going to be successful. Or going to miss from Fata. He wants to continue chasing. The Illuminate does a bit more damage to the side of Mouse. Here comes Funzi. Gets the hook shot. And the Burrow strike out from Paz. Actually, it's the Chen Creeps as well. Koik, he wants to go back in. He's trying to find another kill. His Infest is actually down. But they're just going to kill the Chen army. No deaths right now on the side of Mouse. Bucking Man might have overextended a bit. Here comes Paz. He's stuck between the two members of Maus and he goes down the cogs from Funzi in defensive posturing trying to run away Maus looking to push the tier one and they will get it and Maus really playing super aggressive in this game and it's really showing up that they got the stronger lineup in the mid game and <laughs> we can probably hear the pops from upstairs they're really sharing on for Maus first here and Koiko is 9 0 and 2 I mean yeah. he's got like just as fast or almost as fast as Fata was got like yet last game so this is really going in the favor of Miles Sports once again, but if DD can open up enough room for Silent to farm up, they could probably still turn it. Well, that's the question. Can they farm up? Can they get enough items on Silent especially? Can they actually take fights? Because this Sand King, his net worth is higher than the mid right now of DD. He's almost got a Blink Dagger. He's level 11 on his support Sand King at 20 minutes in, and those are the kind of supports where levels matter almost more than the farm. So... 
For me, this is like an ideal situation for Mouse. They have a mass amount of AoE with that level 2 Epi. The level 2 cooldown, Infest, Lina's Light Strike Array, the Dragon Slave, Coil, Waning Rift, everything. Just every spell in the game. AoE. The best part for Mouse is that they can fight 4 on fire, which means that Black can just keep on farming away on top lane. Like I mentioned, he's finished off the BKB, which means that he can just stay in these fights for so long. Fata's gonna eat a Lance, but actually didn't manage to dodge the damage. Still, it looks like they might want to try and go for Cinder in here. The hook shot going in. Funzi, he's gonna find Lina. Can they get the damage off? He just throws out the Guna Blade to try to do whatever he can. The stun's gonna hit as well. But Cinderin, he goes down. DD, they're here as five. They want to try to pressure the tower. Sand King, not gonna be at the fight just yet. So Poss unable to react to this aggression. And that might be the start of the turnaround that DD were looking for. They might be able to take this tier one tower. Sand King in the meantime, he gets his blink. He's sending it to himself. This could take them by surprise. If DD don't know that Sand King has a blink, hook shot's down for 40 seconds. They're going to have to scout it out with a rocket. They're still continuing the siege. Illuminate, going to eat the creep wave. And Poss looking for a potential opportunity to go for that epi. The open woods is going to be there. Is he going to channel it? He's waiting. Looks like he doesn't want to go just yet. Maybe just hold on to the tower as long as you can. Blink forward coming out of Fata, but he gets lassoed by Sakshka. The lance is going to be there. He ends up dropping. It's too far away. Poss, he can't get the epi off. He has to aggressively blink forward instead. They're trying to find Goblack right now. The Illuminate's going to do quite a bit of damage to Cinderin in the back, who is also running through a Firefly, but Goblack goes down. It's beyond Goblack right there for Koikva. As Cinderin also goes down to Salon in the back. Fata, he buys back. He wants more. He's trying to find anything that he can. Poss, he's got the blink. He finds Sakshka. Here comes the epi. He's going to be able to get the kill for sure. The flare and the flame. Break almost take down Poss, but not quite. Funzi trying to teleport out. Way too much damage coming out. It's a triple kill for Koikva, and they take down more than half of DD. And they're going for Roshan straight away out of this, and it's just such great play out of Mao's. A bit of an overextension when they actually went for that fight, since uh, Poss was actually sitting down by the Ancients, seeing it, seeing if he can get the initiation from there. But Mao. Fada going so aggressively, getting lassoed, but in the end it worked out. They got three kills, or maybe even four kills, but still a really nice exchange for them. And Desolator on Koika as well. We got the double blinks on Fata, the Sand King. The damage I put on Malice is just flat out scary. And really, nobody is safe because, as we mentioned before, everyone has a tremendous amount of AoE. It's not even like they can just focus one person down with Alina, they can focus anybody in an area basically is silent he might be dropping your top lane Poss he's looking for another stun the dust is used can they chase him down they're trying to stop it blink forward coming out of Poss he's got another burrow strike and they're gonna find the kill so silent getting picked off again we saw this aggressive farming style from him the other day and this time Miles are able to punish it yeah double dust actually coming out there but still the farm on these supports and the levels especially there's level 2 Laguna Blade up on Cinder and on that Lina yeah I mean, there's a lot of bursts, especially when you have the setup from the Dream Call as well as an Epicenter. This is looking so good for them, as we actually see Fada getting a kill on Black here when he tries to get some more creeps going in the jungle, so... Oh, Mal's want to fight this. Mid. They really want to fight this. Black actually pops a BKB, he's man-moding it by himself, almost takes down Bucking Man and Sakshka by himself. Here comes Fata. Both of them are going to go down. Four members on the side of DD still going down as well. Here comes the Blink Burrow Strike in on the Funzi. It's going to be a triple kill for Fata. Everyone on the side of DD wiped off the map. It's 11 to 25, and Mal's momentum. We talked about it. We said if they come in strong, they take the first game, they could take a very quick game too. Yeah, the momentum they carried through from the first game has just been so good for them. I mean, they're going to go for tier 3 push here. And DD doesn't really have anything to stop it. Blink forward. Silent. Silence the side of the base. Are they going to be able to actually send it back in time? The Laguna Blade seals the deal. Goblack, he's stuck under the coil. He's trying to run around as best he can. But he's not going to be able to get away from Koikva. He's going to rage, run back past the tier 3 of DD and start to retreat. There's actually Sakshka now alive. Fata comes in with the silence. He wants to stop the aggression coming out from that Batrider and will do so for the time being. But DD, they want to chase. They have to punish this somehow. The call down's going to be there. It slows down Silent and Sakshka quite a bit. I don't think they're actually going to be able to get a kill unless Bucking Mad can find a mana leak. And he's really looking for it right now. But yeah, he's not going to get close enough. The question is though, will they be able to get this tower down? No, Mouse oh, is going to it. Hookshot in from Funzi onto Cinder, and it might have been a little bit over aggressiveness, but Funzi, he's going to be able to fall back. Everyone on the side of Miles, not really full health, not really full mana either, but you can see how bad DD, they want to pick the fights when they know they can win, but Miles just aren't giving him the opportunities. I mean, 
Miles are just playing so well. well. Didn't we see this in game two when DD actually played against Roxkis? Where Roxkis had the upper hand and DD just, they try and force it so much. Where it doesn't actually happen for them. I mean, they don't have the aggressive lineup. They need to kind of react to what Mouse actually does and they just try too hard to force it. We got the replay of this mid fight right now, and you can see Bucking Mad, he is just submitted to the fact that he's gonna go down. Auto attack from Black manages to kill him. Poss, he goes in with Fata. Fata already picking up a double kill right here. You can see three members down on the side of DD. The Burrow Strike in, the Blink going out onto Funzi, and Fata with the kill steal right there, using the Waning Rift to get the triple. But Silent was even dead when they were in middle lane, so I'm not really sure what DD were thinking per se when they were trying to push like that. But they get engaged down in a 4v5, they lose a pretty important fight, and in the late game, maybe they can start to come back, but just look at the net worths, man, this PL, he is just not farming enough. He's falling behind too much, especially when you have two really strong carries on the side of Maus. I mean, Didi's relying on this PL to do everything, whereas Maus have a lifestealer as well as a gyrocopter. The gyrocopter were behind from the start, but he's got a BKB and a lifesteal. And of course the Aegis, and this lifestealer is just so damn farmed. He got 2.5k gold with a Desolator, Armament, and Drums. I mean, he's so farmed. Scary moment now for DD. Here come Mouse. Hookshot's gonna be there. They're gonna be able to catch Black. Here comes the Lasso. They're going for Fata, but a nice triple Burrow Strike coming up from Paz. The Epi's there with the call down. Two members, and actually three with a buyback coming out of Sox. Can make that four as Koikva picks up a double kill. The damage output in the AoE radius on the side of Mouse is so ridiculous that they actually lost four heroes in about the course of two seconds. Sox gets back in the fight, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to stop this all on his own. The gem is actually sitting on the ground as Sinner and I believe just walked around to pick it up. And the tier 3, it's under pressure right now. DD are in very serious danger of getting racks here soon in game number 2. Yeah, I'm back. Expands his Aegis there and <laughs> these fights are just going the way of Miles and DD doesn't really have anything to be able to follow up or counteract the damage coming out of Miles. I mean, you got a hand of God and you got a mechanism. But if the Shen dies instantly, nothing's gonna get used. And we can see 4,100 gold saved up on that life stealer, by the way. That is scary. The amount of farm that he has right now, the Desolator, the Armlet, he's 15 and 0. 15 and 0. And this was a hero who was left alone for probably a good, I would say, 5 to 7 minutes in his lane. And we talked about how the supports couldn't pressure him a lot. But still, I mean, everyone on the side of Mouse is so far. This is a level 15 sanking at 28 minutes. He's going to have level 3 epi soon. He's got a blink. He's probably going for the BKB because he has the Ogre Club. Cinderin is even level 13. And on Alina as a support at this point in the game, that's just impressive. He's going for a mechanism on Alina as well. Yeah. I mean, you don't see that often, but since he's got so much farm, he can actually go for it. He needs about 600 more gold, and he's going to be able to finish that mechanism off. And that's going to be really good for them in the fights because even though they're winning the fights, they still come out kind of low on HP after that, especially Koikwa, since he's pretty much diving the tier 4 towers. So it's not surprising that he gets low, but having the mechanism means that they never really have to go back again. A gem has been given back to Fata, by the way, as he picks up a double damage here. And I totally agree about the mech choice, especially like Keeper of the Light is so annoying when you don't have a mech or you don't have a pipe and you can just try to counter the wave as hard as you can. Fata showing himself here in bottom lane taking a pretty good chunk of damage from Silence Illusion Army, but they will be able to burst at least a couple of them down. And PL, this is one of the situations where he struggles the most. Not only has he been held down in terms of overall farm, but he's not really able to do a whole lot in terms of AoE either. So now we're going to watch this fight again here middle. And we can see Sakshi he goes for the lasso, he finds Fata, but the immediate triple burrow strike coming out from Paz to stop the aggression from coming out. Fata will die before he coils, but by this time, there's already three people dead. Sakshi buys back, and at this stage, Goblack dies in basically three hits, and that was pretty much the end of the fight, more or less. So, tier 2 tower, seemingly the next target here out of Maus. We can actually even see the penance in game. They get over 6,000 right now. You could definitely tell there's some Maus fans watching here. Yeah, and what can DD do to defend this tower? They use the Firefly now already, which means that it's only the Cersei Warriors that are, or Hellbear Smashes that's going to be able to do something. But with the Desolator, they're going to be able to bring this tower down really fast as we see Koiko actually going for a Soul Cross, and he's going to finish that off right now. So the pushing power is so damn strong for them. 
Fata actually being forced back here. A little bit of a bummer. They don't unfortunately have a Keeper of the Light like Didi do to just pull people across the map. And Silent, I just want to talk about him for a second because this guy has pretty much never been on his side of the map the whole game. Even in the team fights, he's running more towards Mouse's base than he is his. He wants to find the solo kills, he wants to try to find any semblance of farm, and don't get me wrong, he kind of has to in this position, because you're not going to find much control in your jungle, especially when Mouse have it warded, but it just goes to show how hard of a time DD are actually having here. He's going to have 3.6k gold now, which means that he should be able to finish off um, his Diffusive Blade if he wants to go for that, but he needs more items than just a Diffusive Blade. He needs to finish off the heart as well, and against Mouse right now, he kind of needs a butterfly as well. Because he, he's going to just get mauled down by this Lifestealer. He needs a lot. And I think that's pretty much been the story. They're going to be able to find Cinder and going to be an easy turnaround kill here for DD. And killing Cinder and yeah, he's not the highest value kill. But anything at this point, DD are going to be more than happy with. Mouse probably just backing out to make sure that the next Roche is going to go their way as well. Black's working his way towards the butterfly, which is going to be really good for him just to be able to dodge out the majority of the damage coming out of DD, since Silent is their main damage source, if he has a butterfly and a BKB, he can't really be touched. I mean, you can lasso him, of course, but other than that, there's not much they have. Things get scarier here in game number two for DD, and if Mouse win this, you gotta be really panicking if you're DD, because you have one chance to come back, and you have to win three games? back-to-back -back against any high-caliber team winning three games in a row is very difficult to do. I mean, there's no question about that. But when you have to come back from an 0-2 to win three games, that's got to be even harder. I mean, the pressure is really high for them. Even though they've already managed to qualify for Seattle, you still don't want to be in the spot where you're in the wild card just because you don't want to go up against oh, the Eastern Goblin. We see Goblin just dying instantly down in bottom. Koikwa clearing up Full the creeps AC. as well. And... They're just getting some really nice pickoff kills. They're gonna be able to get this here to tower. Silent buying a few of the blades straight up. He's gonna upgrade it as well just to be able to get the extra damage output. But that means no buyback. I don't think it's gonna be enough either. Yeah. Even if you had a buyback, probably wouldn't be enough. We'll see if Mao's gonna apply enough pressure. They might just turn around. Roshan's gonna be up mm -hmm. very soon, actually up right now, so. Just respawned. See if DD can maybe try to contend it. I honestly would say no, just because Mao's have one of the best team fight compositions in an enclosed space that you're ever going to find, ever. So, Mao's, they're grouped up here. Player's going to be able to scout out Roshan, now being attempted here on the side of Mao's ports. And they have a tremendous amount of minus armor. They have a Desolator, they have the AC. So, it's going to be dying extremely fast. And I imagine they're probably going to be giving it to Black here. I don't think they can even kill Koika. Yeah, Black's going to go ahead and pick it up. And He's got the Butterfly done now. So Butterfly, BKB, Helm of the Nominator, Phase. His start wasn't fantastic, but he is starting to get a little bit out of control now as we also see Cinder and finish up his mech. Mal's got one really hard to kill hero in Fada, and then they got two immortal heroes at this point. I mean, the Life Stealer, there's no way they're going to be able to bring him down unless the PO gets him or they get a lasso pull him towards the Tier 4 towers and the PO can just hit him with all these solutions. But other than that, it's... Koikwa is not going to go down, and Black finishing off that butterfly with the Aegis as well. There's no way those two heroes are going to go down in a big team fight engagement. Two TPs top here to defend the very large creep push actually that Silent had been mounting. Now Fata, when he gets that hex, life just gets even harder. And Mal's, they're still sitting in their jungle, so they're not really utilizing the map maybe as well as they could be, considering they just got Roshan. I feel for them, the next step should logically be, okay, let's take over Didi's jungle, let's force them inside of the base. We already know we got mid, so we can do something like put Fata in the top lane to push. Even in a 4 versus 5, I'm not sure if Didi could feel super confident taking a fight with how farmed the Lifestealer is, and just having the blink on the Sand King, black as well with an Aegis. What did Didi really do from this point on? They need to farm up and pretty much split push because they got a keeper of the light of course and the PO which means that their split push is going to be really strong but with the farm that Paz and Sunrun got we see Paz here he's keeping down to bottom lane and he's got the epicenter with Koiko inside of him which means that they should be able to kill oh, off Silent, Silent here they got a gem they're gonna find him he wants to find the epi Silent taking so much damage I don't even think they needed the epi for that kill oh. he just did so much in so little time the damage I put a Koikva is insane right now yeah, and even though they're just three heroes up in top lane, DD lost their main damage source, and Black is doing 
enough damage to be able to bring this tower down, which means that Didi shouldn't really be able to fight up in this top lane. Tier 2 tower, the next target. Top lane here for Maus. And Didi are trying to defend it as long as they can. They got the cogs down, but like we were talking about, being able to defend in this situation will be a godsend for Didi. Delaying the game is pretty much their only option. And honestly, delaying the game when you're so far behind... It's going to take, I think, nothing short of a miracle for DD to actually turn this around. Mid lane is pushing in, which means that they're forced to go there and defend it, and that's going to leave the tier 2 to be able to take in, to be able to be taken by Maus without any contention, so they can just move into the base now as well. They got pushed on every lane, and with Silent being dead, he can't counter push and spit push, which means that they can just go in and kill the base without any problems. We'll see if they're going to manage to do so. Illuminate! Taking away the creep waves, so that's a little bit frustrating if you're on the side of Miles, and they don't have a pipe or anything, so... It's gonna take a while to crack it, but I think if they honestly just forced it, there would be very little that Didi could do. There's 4,300 gold on Quig Quig, and he's... He's unreasonably farmed. Like, it's, it's not fair how much money he has. Yeah, Quig Quig Oh, they're just gonna go in straight away on a Funzi double coil! They're gonna catch Goblack as well, they wanna get the lasso on a Quig Quig, here comes Poss. He gets a double burrow strike, Goblack gonna be going down, along with Keeper of the Light. There's just way too much damage coming out from the side of Miles. They take two quick kills, they're gonna turn their attentions to the tier 3 in the top lane. Batrider, basically no health, being forced to retreat. Funzi, he's still got hookshot, but he had to pop the Ghost after, but they call the GG! And Maus! They're 2-0 up in the specified here at the TI3 Western Qualifiers. Unbelievable game number one and game number two performances out of them. Miles is just playing perfectly. I mean, the rotations that came out early on, they knew that Koikwa wouldn't really have any problems whatsoever down in the bottom lane just because Keeper of the Light and Phantom Lancer, you saw Syndrome actually died to it, but other than that, they don't really have any kill potential on the Life Stealer, so Pass rotated up, started pulling, got so many levels up, and... I don't know, Miles just playing perfect, a perfect game. It feels like if they played this way the entire tournament, they just would have went straight through the top, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, not a single drop loss. To a single, a single team, maybe not even a single game, but as Cinderin said in the past, this is a team who performs when it counts, this is a team who is very momentum-based, but when they get it, they are absolutely terrifying. So once again, congratulations to Miles for taking a Game 2 victory. We could still see DD come back, but it's going to be a long road if they want to get themselves back into the game. And we're joined once again by James and Bruno here in the studio. Miles are really scary looking today. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. But if DD need to come back, they need to take a break. They need to go get some fresh air, just step away from the PCs and reset themselves. Because just losing that 2-0 is really tough. And, and we kind of want to talk about the draft and how mm -hmm. the game played out. Did you out. watch That's, this game? Yeah, the uh, cat was fed. But... The whole lineup of DD, it's very scary if the early to mid game goes in their favor, just because that's where the Batrider and Clockwork initiation is a huge deal. But if Mouse Sports get the advantage, and it's mainly been because this guy, Fatter, just so awesome on his puck when it comes to any kind of mid game rotation, it's, he's just devastating. Everywhere he goes, he makes something happen. The fact is, you shut this team down, and then the whole game relies only on these four heroes playing around trying to get this guy farm. So your Clockwork and your Batrider, essentially, they're not as, you know, threatening. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're, like, you're not really looking for that initiation team fight. You're like, we need to get this guy farm. And this was quite greedy, but what I liked, the only thing I liked about this um, in, in terms of team fights is... Normally you'd see Keeper of the Light get mech, um, yeah. but you'd expect Chen to finish a mech and also, um, you know, he has his hand of God, and that allowed him to get a pipe yes. on Keeper of the Light, but it was so late, and a pipe was a really good choice. So item-wise, I didn't, like, I felt everything was going fine in terms mm -hmm. of they had a really good thought process, but man, this old school, this old school duo, yeah. Yeah. it's so good against the PL. Because, well, okay, when you've got a Blink Dagger, it's unbelievably good. But even though it's so good with his PL, the, the stun damage coming out from both and then the Laguna Blade to finish, a PL until he's finished a heart, like, and he has to finish a heart to basically survive that. And you yeah. saw um, Cinderin and Paz actually pick up kills on the PL mid-game by themselves. And it was, it was such a nice pick overall by Mouse Sports. Yeah, I want to add one more thing before we get Bruno's opinion, so I'm sorry, I'm... I'm taking your airtime, Bruno, but the important thing for me here is not only the duo that you mentioned, which was really strong, but it seemed like 
the intention of the picks in general for mouse sports was to force Goblack around the map, was to prevent him from getting the start that he wanted. Because even if he goes to his own jungle, he sees it's warded, what mm. else is he going to do? So in a sense, they forced it so the Lina and the Sand King got more experience than normal. In a normal Triland situation, you see a Sand King is going to be underleveled. He's really not that good until he gets seven at least. And yeah. obviously you want the blink. So they actually gave their supports a tremendous amount of experience at gold just by not being together all the time. Sure, later on, once they got their core items, they were able to. But for me, it's more Cinder and hitting six at like ten and a half minutes in. That's like almost unheard of on a support. Well, maybe not unheard of, but on Alina at least. On Cinder. Really on Cinder. Yeah, maybe. No, no. Uh, <laughs> he's been playing great. Uh, but Bruno? Yeah. Um, I've never been so happy of seeing cables, but that's something that we'll talk about later. Uh, the thing about... <coughs> This PL and against a life stealer, and I'm losing my mic. Uh, a life stealer and the gyrocopter. I showed during the game that there's a 10 and 3 favor for the life stealer gyrocopter combo, and it's not because it's a hard counter, but rather because you have to commit to stop these two heroes, life stealer and gyrocopter, individually. Two really strong mid game to late game carries, but com uh, as opposed to the life uh, to the phantom lancer, they both can get pretty scary at the beginning of the game. And a bad rider is actually a good matchup, but with the safe lane in your favor, knowing that you will always be safe next to your tower, you just play safe. If you push the lane, you just go get some neutral creeps. Remember, Gyrocopter can stack and then kill with flat cannon as well. Going for them. And that tri lane, uh, not facing the tri lane, actually facing just a PL and a, f um, a keeper of the light. The Chen couldn't be here. He had to rotate, as you well mentioned, had to go top. Suddenly, these three heroes control the lane at all. Like, there's nothing a Phantom Lancer and a Keeper of the Light can do until at least the Phantom Lancer is level 7. So, getting what they wanted on the Life Sealer, getting pretty much more or less what they wanted on the Gyrocopter. When the game started to get very intensive right here, but Ryder had to rotate, Clockwork needed to make something happen. Okay, the Life Sealer is not getting as much, but the Gyrocopter is getting everything he wants now. And that's the, pretty much the story of the game. You can't stop both with these picks and protect the Phantom Lancer at the, f at the same time. Yeah, the Phantom Lancer had it really tough. So congratulations to Mouse Sports. Uh, they're going to go up 2-0. And as I mentioned, I wouldn't be surprised if they come in today and take a 3-0 just mm -hmm. in terms of a lot of confidence from yesterday. They've been in <clears throat> a lot of top teams. And I felt that they maybe came in with more motivation, uh, which is surprising, but just like we want to take DD down, we want yeah. to win this, we, we, you know, we were the team that were in the lower bracket and we're back here. So as I mentioned, I hope DD have taken a little bit of time, uh, stepped away from their PCs, got some fresh air.